So during this crazy time of being home with our children and trying to ensure that they continue learning while also juggling our daily responsibilities, I'd like to encourage all of us to stop stressing out so much about having our kiddos do all the stuff. And I just want to remind you to do what's really important and foundational in mathematics. I'm Christina Tonneville, The Recovering Traditionalist, and today we're going to take a look at supitizing, a mathematical foundation in our quest to build our math minds so we can build the math minds of our kiddos. So first off, let's start with what is supitizing? I don't know if you just heard that. It's my kids. The joys of being home with the kids. <laughs> So, what is subitizing? Subitizing is the ability to know how many without counting. So, if you go like this and your kids or students can tell you instantly that it's three, that's subitizing versus a kid who needs to count one by one by one. Now, counting one by one is a foundational piece as well. Counting is super important. But subitizing allows kids to be able to see groupings. And those groupings are really foundational as they start to do operations like add, subtract, multiply, and divide. It's the same thing when kids are learning to read. If we, when we first teach kids to learn to read, we say things like, you know, they do it in isolation, k, a, t, and then they put that together to make cat. It's the same thing as one, two, three, that's three. But eventually we don't want them seeing k, at and having to sound it all out the whole way, like for cat nap. You don't want them to sound out k at n a p. You want them to see the chunks, cat nap. So in mathematics, what that looks like is let's say they're adding eight plus seven. Well, if a kid doesn't instantly know, which eventually we want kids to have immediate recall, but let's be real here, not all kids do. So how do we help our, ch our students, our children, who don't instantly know the answer? Well, here is where subitizing plays a role. If kids don't instantly know, they'll go back and they'll wanna count one by one on their fingers. Instead, what I wanna encourage you is to help them see the visualization through subitizing of those amounts. So let's say we're doing eight plus seven. If I had my own kid here, I would have them show seven and I would show eight. So I'm gonna show the eight, you hold up your fingers of seven. Show seven with your fingers. And let's see what we notice. If I have eight and you have seven, what kids will often see, not all kids because they need to do some subitizing work beforehand, is that we'll see kids a lot of times say, oh, we each have a five, five and five makes 10, and then they'll put our three and two together to make the other five, and then the 10 and five makes 15. So seeing those groupings that eight is not just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight is a five and a three, helps them be able to chunk and put groups together. Okay? Same thing holds true as they move into multiplication. Kids often struggle with multiplying by seven. Sevens are tough even for adults. Okay? But let's say we have the problem seven times four. That really means seven groups of four. So if a kid doesn't instantly know what seven groups of four is, we will see them count by fours. So they'll say four, eight, 12, and so on which is a foundational piece, but really we want them to start seeing groups. So if you can hold up seven, okay, I have seven groups of four and get them to visualize, and they may need to model it, make groups of four, seven groups of four, but using supitizing, we want to see, do they know what five groups of four is? Because five groups, they tend to know those ones quicker than any of the other multiplication facts, twos, tens, and fives, kids will tend to know first. So if they know five groups of four, like hold it here, what's five groups of four? Oh, that's 20. And what's two more groups of four? Eight. So if we put those together, 28. Seven groups of four is 28. Seven times four is 28. So this ability to subitize helps them be able to see chunks and groups instead of seeing it one by one by one. So how do we actually build that for our kids, whether it's in a classroom or in our homes? My number one advice is always to play 
games with kids. If you have dice, dice are great because there's a pattern there and they'll start to instantly recognize. That's one of the ways that you can see if your kids have the ability to subitize is play some dice games if they roll the dice and they can tell how many instantly or if they have to count the little marks on the dice. If you don't have dice, uh, cards are also great, but I don't like normal decks of cards because if you think about it, it's not actually showing the correct amount. So if you have a deck of cards and let's say you have the six of hearts, when you look at the six of hearts, yes, it has six hearts, but it also has one up in the corner, another one down in this corner. So there's actually eight hearts on a six which can be for confusing for small kids. So I would encourage you to find some subitizing cards and you can find tons of them just by Googling subitizing cards. I will also link to ones that I've created. I call mine savvy subitizing because they have all different kinds of patterns. We have finger patterns, we have tally marks, we have 10 frames and wreck and wrecks. If you're not familiar with wreck and wrecks, they're beads on a thing and they're red and white beads because the, the red helps trigger that after five, they see the groups of red and white. It's kind of like your fingers. The nice part about these is they're grouped all together. So if you don't have cards, you don't have dice, use the fingers. We've all got those fingers and just do finger patterns with kids. Ask them how many. Ask them to show you. Show me four. If they're always doing this, which is great, that's a wonderful way to show four. Do something like, what about this? Is this four? And you, at first they'll be like, no, depending upon the age level of your kids. But my kids did that. They're like, that's not four. This is only four. So vary up your finger patterns. Another way to do it is just with snacks. When you're doing, or f any kind of food, it doesn't have to be snacks. But one of my favorites when my kids were little was they loved goldfish. And I would say something like, you can have two goldfish but I would give them three goldfish or the reverse. Like I'll say, you can have four goldfish, but I would only give them three. And do they recognize when I'm not giving them the right amount? Okay? Those are just some quick tips to help you build subitizing for your kiddos. And I hope that this video has helped you build your math mind so you can build the math minds of your students, right? Because our kiddos are now our students at home. All right, have a great day.